Alex here, and I'm going to be showing you how to play Kerbal Space Program. And so we start off and we go into the Vehicle Assembly Building. Now, I'm going to make this workable for people that own the demo, too, not just people that own the game. You probably haven't bought the game if you don't know how to play it, though. It would make no fucking sense. But in the case that you did, you're an idiot. Alright. So you start off, this is probably the most basic one right here. Take this one, the command pod. And the first thing you want to get before you do anything is definitely a parachute, just in case your flight fails. Um, next thing I definitely would do is a decoupler, because it is the... I don't even feel like explaining it, just, just get the damn decoupler. Uh, let's see. Now, next thing is definitely an SAS. Is what it does is it controls your spacecraft for you. It keeps it going in a straight line without it. It's pretty difficult to do it yourself. So, like I said, just definitely get this. And then right after you add that, add a fuel tank, the FLT, FL dash deep, whatever the hell, the FL five hundred fuel tank. Um, and then add a. Then you get the big one right here, and you got the. Smaller one that does the thrust vectoring and whatever, whatnot. If you read the description, put that one on there. It's, it's the uh, probably the best one to use in space. Uh, let's see. The next thing you're gonna want to use or get is where the right here. Here they are. The radio decouplers. You see? The, okay, for let me explain this first. This is symmetry right here. Is what this does is you know, I'll actually just show you instead of explaining it. That's two. So it'll add two opposite of each other, or you can do three, three, four, six, whatever that number is. Eight, I'm guessing. And you can just do that. But what we're going to do here is three. It's, I'm just trying to do the most basic, simplest, best design to achieve orbit around Earth. Um, so go ahead and put three and then put one wherever you think be the best on that. I'd recommend doing it on the fuel pod. And then get more of those FLT500 fuel tanks and then attach them to the decouplers right here and so make sure you get them perfectly on there because if you don't I th I'm pretty sure it'll friggin break I'm not sure let me go ahead and add two more this is really what's gonna help us achieve orbit right here this part of the spacecraft and then just put these engines on alright so after we've done that get another set of decouplers added to the bottom. should automatically do it for all three. And then add a, this thing called the tri-coupler. This is what it allows you to do. Is it allows you to add three different things to the bottom of those. Probably going to be adding a fuel tank if anything else. But yeah, do this. Add, add four of these. Sometimes it's a pain in the ass to actually get working. Because it never wants to go without, like, well, what the hell? Messing up on you. Sorry if you hear the clicking noise. I'm using a webcam. And it's okay. Sorry about that, guys. Um, Adobe made my computer freeze up and make this game stop working but I tried to uh, start it back up right where about where we left off at uh, so yeah I'm definitely trying to get around four I did three one time that worked too but four definitely definitely yeah definitely four because it gives us right to where we need to be And then once we have that, we add the bigger engines. One each one. And there we go. Now it's not finished yet until we add these. This part is pretty important. But, um, these parts, the uh, little strut connectors. They uh, is what they do is they well, they hold your aircraft together. Spacecraft. Ah, spacecraft. And so, you know, once you, of course, you know, since you have the tri symmetry on, it does it on every side for you. So I'd recommend doing it right there. And normally I don't need it, but just right here to be safe. 
it doesn't really add much weight at all. Yeah, 0.05. Um, if you do so happen to have the version that I have, you paid for it. You can add these intakes. You make your engines a tiny bit better, but I'm just gonna take them off for video's sake. Um, so it should be held together. And oh yeah, I've been having a problem. I think it's just a bug with the game, but with the heavier aircraft, they sort of get glitched into the ground. So what I have to do is I have to add these um. The couplers on the bottom. So, I mean, if you're playing on the beta, just go ahead and add those just to make it easier for you to understand what I'm doing. Um, that's, and we can go ahead and name it. Oh, actually, oh yeah. Let's call it the, I'm just going to call it the Orbit Chair. Wow. It's spell Mark 1. Um, oh, actually, and as a matter of fact, you're going to want to add these winglets, is what they're going to do. Is they're gonna help turn your aircraft while you're in space? I'm just gonna go and add them right in between. Not in space, in the atmosphere. And then, yeah, definitely go ahead and add. You can add one at each stage if you want, just to make it a little more controllable. But yeah, there's that's pretty much what the aircraft looks like. It looks or spacecraft keeps saying aircraft. And that should get you in orbit. If it doesn't, then you've probably messed up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and launch. That was the last one I tried to do. Freaking fraps crapped out on me. So I had to do this video. It's my second time doing it. Hopefully it's working. Um, I don't know if I've already said this, but this is not a gaming computer, so it is tons of lag. So we're um we'll just wait for a while. It is nighttime because in my save it is nighttime because of stuff. Um, it's a little less lag than I had the last time I tried. It's not as bad, but it's still shitty. Okay, I'm gonna run you through the controls here. Um, T is what you, well, T controls your SAS, which is that guidance thing that you put on the top right here, I'm pretty sure. So go ahead and hit T first, that's what you want to do right at the top so you can take straight off, and as you can see, it's controlling the little, little fins. It's just, the ship's wobbling a little bit, so it's freaking out trying to control it. I don't know why it's stupid. Um, okay, shift and control controls your th throttle, which is right there. You can see it moving up and down while I hit shift, or moving up while I hit shift and down while I hit control. G force, I don't really pay attention to that because it really doesn't do much. Um, this kind of tells you your orientation over the earth. That is your speed across the surface, like your linear motion. This is the layers of the atmosphere that you are in. This is your vertical speed. That's five. That's ten. That's a hundred. That's a thousand. And of course, it's zero. This is the meters above the ground you are. So, uh, I guess 84 meters above sea level right now. Uh, let's see, here's your different stages. Uh, let's see, anything else? This is your, your roll, y'all, pitch. Of course, the SAS pretty much takes care of that for the most part. Here's your Kermans you, you uh, have. Um, there's your SAS force, and that's pretty much about it. That SAS force is the pilots trying to control it, it's really useless. Alright, so yeah, once, once you hit T and you have your SAS turned on, make sure your throttle's all the way up. And actually, you're gonna have to hit space uh, one time to uh, deactivate the decouplers. And I hit space another time. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, due to the retardedly loud audio, most of this part kind of washed out everything I was saying, so I just go, went ahead and turned down the. Uh, Actually, I just narrated up top of what I'm doing right now, but, um, okay, so I'm pretty much going to explain to you what's going on. Alright, so I'm taking off, there's the fuel, right there, uh, yeah, it's getting hotter, oh, they went, what, fucking, they brought, wow, I failed, my ass, it's kind of hard to do this, not being live and all, but, yeah, there's thrusters, and, you know, they're overheating, and, you know, they don't really overheat in the atmosphere unless you have a bunch of like a lot I mean a lot of thrusters near each other but you can go and fast forward and you can kind of speed up through the atmosphere you can wait a lot it's a lot of so a lot of waiting this game takes a little bit of patience to play it too it's a good thing to pass time on but you gotta be careful when you uh double you know fast forward it because sometimes your SAS can't keep up with it uh, it's weird how it works but uh or you know, sometimes you'll overshoot what you're doing and you fuck up. You gotta really pay attention to what uh, layer you are in the atmosphere, too, as well. I 
figure out what I'm gonna do next year. It's difficult. Still plenty of time. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely another time warp. Okay, so right about here in the atmosphere uh, is where you really, really start to pick up speed because you're out of the thick air of the atmosphere. And you can slowly see that speed start to creep up really fast. Yeah, I guess I'll go. I think I'd yeah, double the speed right here. Those are all the uh, empty fuel tanks. And I mess up here because freaking the SAS starts to mess up when it gets into space. And I got too big of an aircraft to, or spacecraft to control. I'm gonna try to lower my thrust. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm actually trying to get a little bit of thrust to get a little more speed going up. Since I lost a little bit when I uh, turned my thrusters off. And yeah, right here I separate so I can control it in space easier. I kind of messed up, but it's I still I still manage to save it. So I'm trying. I took off the SAS to be able to turn it like this, and then once I get it to the angle that I want to, I turn the SS, SAS back on with T, and then it straightens itself back out. And then I think yeah, I give it thrust right here, but I hit the space one more time after I hit space to separate it and uh, thrust it off. And uh, if you hit M, you can go into this mode right here where you can see you yeah, see an uh, apoasis, and uh, it's pretty much your peak of your flight, and you can see everything else orbiting. I have like a bunch of stuff orbiting Earth. Uh, so there's uh, okay, yeah, there's the the moon and some other debris. And there's the other thing called Minimus, or I can't really see it on the screen reason right now to do this one, but uh, yeah, it's just another. You don't have that on the uh. The demo version, and just some other stuff. I orbiting and my fail piloting. <laughs> I completely missed the moon. The moon. So yeah, it's really st it moves faster and faster. The um, I guess the farther you go. And yeah, I think I could double up the speed. You know, checking my aircraft out because it looks so spacecraft. Fuck. So it looks so sexy in space. That's my uh, orbit speed right there over the Earth. Skip ahead until we and uh, I think I don't even know what I'm doing. Oh yeah, go ahead and uh, I guess I'll fast forward. Actually, I'll skip ahead to where I get to a decent place to resume the video. All right, guys. Uh, so I almost have my full orbit around the Earth. It's still getting bigger. I actually slowed it down. I think I want double speed right here just to get it going around faster. That's the parapet. I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, that's like you're pretty much at the bottom, like the opposite of the peak. You know, the closest you get to the Earth. Kerbin is what they call it. But so I go ahead and got it into orbit for you guys. Um. So I did what I said. I showed you how to build the aircraft. Anyway, guys, rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace out.